do what you love the most and have your hobby as your profession. So does it live up to the hype? Well, that's another thing that I'm going to try to answer in this video. Hi friends, welcome back to another video. If you're new to this channel, my name is Christian Koivima and I'm a full-time Swedish workout artist. It's been a while since I've done a video like this where you can actually see my face, but uh, now I'm back. And in uh, today's video, I was thinking that I should uh, talk a little bit more about uh, my experiences as a full-time artist because I've been doing this now full-time since August this year and uh, there are people out there that are wondering how I'm doing and what the experience is like. So uh, that's the content for today's video. There are a lot of people out there that uh, love painting as much as I do and I'm imagining that uh, there's a lot of those people that probably thinks that uh, it would be the dream life to uh, do what you love the most and have your hobby as your profession. So does it live up to the hype? Well, that's another thing that I'm going to try to answer in this video. Before I start talking about uh, my experience as a full-time artist, I want to give you a little bit more information about the journey, how I got to this point. So I'm an educated teacher and I've been teaching for 20 years. And uh, while I was teaching, I was also uh, pursuing an athletic career in sports and I was competing all over the world for quite some time. But I injured myself in 2009 and after that, uh, I started painting more and more. And painting kind of became my new obsession, you could say. When I started off with watercolors, uh, I was struggling quite a lot for a, a long time before I got anywhere, but uh, eventually I started to see a little bit of progress and uh, somewhere around that time I felt uh, I got the courage to actually post some of my art online and I got positive feedback and uh, that inspired me to continue painting more and then eventually people wanted to buy my art uh, and I it was very cheap at that time and uh, people uh, uh, almost got my art for free. And uh, from that on, it's just been going uh, and developing and one thing has led to another. And uh, uh, from August this year, I decided to take the step to become a full-time artist. And uh, so this video is going to be about uh, my experiences from August and forward. Before I made the decision to become a full-time artist and make my hobby into my full-time profession, there were obviously a few things that I was really, really excited about, but there were also a few things that uh, made me a little worried. So uh, I'm going to start off by analyzing these two things first. So one thing that I was really excited about was painting full time and being able to put way more time into painting and hopefully develop my skills. And uh, I mean, I haven't only been doing this for, since August. But uh, so far, it's living up to the expectation. It's awesome being able to put down time into something that you are really interested in and want to develop. Uh, so the question is, have I developed my skills? I don't know. I think it's the same thing as before. It goes up and then it goes down. And sometimes I feel like I've, I've lost the touch and sometimes I go through some experience or I learn something from my painting uh, and I all of a sudden get tons of new ideas to develop my paintings. So it's hard to tell if I developed but I think I think definitely uh, my paintings have changed in some way anyways and the, and the process of uh, creating these artworks. Another thing that I was really excited about was uh, having less stress in my job because uh, uh, one benefit of doing this full time is that I can decide over my own days when I do different things and how I want to do them and so on. And that has definitely affected my days, being less stressful uh, and I can take my time doing things in the pace that I want to do and that is uh, pure luxury in my opinion. But as I mentioned, there was also a few things that I was uh, worried about. Uh, starting to paint full time and uh, the first thing that I thought about was uh, that I would not have as much social interactions as I had before because coming from teaching 
Uh, I was used to having lots of people around me all the time, a lot of social uh, interactions and uh, going to uh, sitting in my studio all day, painting on my own, talking to a camera like I'm doing right now. Um, and that has been a big change. Uh, I think I've gotten used to it a little bit more, but I still miss uh, a lot the social interactions that I would get uh, in teaching, for example. But having said that, I still haven't done any of my exhibitions. I have been painting and preparing for big exhibitions until now. So uh, in a few weeks, my first exhibition is going to start off and hopefully I'm going to get a little bit more social interactions right then. Another thing that really worried me about becoming a full-time artist was uh, if I would lose motivation, uh, spending so many hours every day painting and doing the same thing over and over again. And uh, so I decided pretty early that I need to have uh, a lot of different kind of jobs in my job description as an artist. Uh, because uh, if I would only paint for eight hours a day or even more, uh, I think I would eventually probably lose motivation in painting. So there's a lot of things that I do um, every week and I'm going to talk about that shortly. But uh, that has been helpful because I do a lot of different things every week and that makes my job a little bit more fun, I think. Another thing that I was worried about uh, was uh, primarily based on what other people were was telling me because uh, before I started this uh, journey people were telling me that your life is going to be so comfortable you're going to sleep in every day you don't have any times to keep it's going to be all great and I started thinking that maybe I will get too comfortable uh, so the first thing I did was actually create a schedule for myself deciding uh, what time I should start working every day uh, and what days I should do what and uh, that has actually helped me uh, being a little bit more organized in what I do every week. So uh, I'm not that comfortable because I still work many hours every week. Probably a little bit too much. Um, yeah. Well anyways, uh, so what do I do in my work? What is my job description like? So I'm gonna talk you through the different things that I do uh, on a normal week as a full-time artist. Well, number one, of course, I'm doing a lot of painting. I paint uh, probably, I would say, six hours a day in average. Creating watercolors creates new jobs for me and other chores because I like stretching my watercolors after they're done so I can hang it up on the wall uh, without a frame if I would like to, which is really practical when I have exhibitions, for example. So the first thing that I like to do is flatten the, the painting and after it's flat, I need to digitize it. And uh, that is not easy, especially this time of year when it's pretty dark outside. And uh, I need to name the watercolor and I need to organize it and store it in my hard drives so I know uh, what I have and what I don't have and so on. And besides painting watercolors and doing the digitizing and so on, uh, I also put quite a lot of time into creating content just like this. Creating videos for YouTube, but also creating tutorials for Patreon and helping my apprentice students on Patreon is something that I put a lot of time into as well. Answering their questions, tutoring them, helping them, giving them feedback on their work. Uh, and I also spend a lot of time on the forums on my Domestica courses because I have two of those as well. So that takes quite a lot of time. And uh, when I'm not doing that, I'm in uh, contact with uh, uh, future students on my uh, physical courses, because I do courses uh, where I have the, I meet people face to face. Uh, you could call them workshops, I guess. Uh, and that takes a lot of preparations as well. And uh, besides that, I also have to prepare for upcoming exhibitions. So it's not just painting watercolors for the exhibitions. There's a lot of thought process going into that because uh, you want to have an exhibition where you feel like the artworks uh, go together. So you, there's a lot of planning going into what kind of motifs you want to paint, uh, what sizes you're going to have. Uh, you need to have a lot of contact with the gallery. Uh, so you have a plan together. And uh, besides that, there's a lot of marketing. 
that you need to put time into in, in for the uh, exhibition so people actually know there, that there is going to be an exhibition so that is quite time consuming as well there's also uh, quite a lot of traveling in this job as well uh, because uh, I need to find uh, inspiration somewhere and uh, the best way is to visit new locations, uh, photograph, taking new photo references for future paintings, uh, visit galleries uh, and when I have exhibitions there's going to be also a lot of uh, travels because I have to deliver my paintings and uh, get them eventually if uh, they haven't all been sold and so on. So there's there's a lot of traveling here uh, on a regular basis as well. And being a full-time artist, it's, it's important that you are seen, that people know that uh, your work is out there. And uh, that's why I need to put quite a lot of time on social media. So uh, taking pictures of my art, which I also already talked about, digitizing uh, is important in this uh, thing, but posting on different platforms and uh, yeah, being out there. So people can see you and your artwork. That's uh, part of the job description. It also takes a little bit of time running my own webshop that I have because I sell my own limited edition prints through my uh, website. And uh, once someone makes an order, I uh, have to take care of all the shipping. So that takes a little bit of time too. And another thing that I spend a lot of time doing is uh, answering emails or writing emails. Uh, I write emails and answer emails uh, with different organizations, companies, galleries uh, for future collaborations. That takes a little bit of time. And also students that ask me questions and they want feedback on things. So uh, there's, there's a lot of emails every week that needs to be answered or at least read. And uh, being a full-time artist means running your own business. And running your own business you need to do your bookkeeping as well so that's something that i do uh, every month in the end of the month i need to go through my paperwork and uh, that's a full days of work almost getting that done and uh, the least fun thing with being a work artist is cleaning up the messes that i make all the time when i'm painting but that's something that has to be done especially when i'm trying to create content just like this so you have a nice table here in front instead of the big mess that I create for myself when I'm painting. Okay, so that's a little bit about my experiences as a full-time artist, but I'm also gonna to try to answer a few of those questions that you guys wrote to me that you were curious about. So here they go. The first question is from Callie and she wants to know, uh, can you describe what a typical day would be like for you? Or just pick any day and describe. I'm always curious to see and hear what goes behind the scenes. So I actually have a plan on uh, sharing more content uh, behind the scenes and uh, that's something that's gonna be more in the future. Uh, right now it's kind of a hassle because I'm uh, walking on crutches because I'm going through a, a treatment you would say for my uh, arthritis in my hip. But uh, sometime next year I'll be fit for fight, and I'm thinking that that's a good time to start sharing more material like that. But anyway, what's a typical day for me? Uh, I would say that a typical day for me is uh, waking up uh, around 6.30, uh, having my morning coffee, and then eventually I'll uh, walk up to my studio, and uh, uh, the normal day I start off by painting. Uh, I paint until 10 o'clock, and uh, then I take a coffee break. And then after the coffee break, I continue painting. Um, and normally after lunch, I find some other kind of job that I need to do. For example, answering emails, maybe creating YouTube content, uh, helping students or something like that. And uh, to get a little break from painting. And uh, after a few hours, I go back to painting and then paint for a few more hours. So that's, I would say that's a typical day, but uh, there's also days where, um, like my Wednesdays, for example, I don't paint that much because that's the day that I mostly use for editing my videos, for example. And the next question is from Mark and he writes, on Domestica, I read about your past sporting accomplishments in karate. 
I wonder if you have ever transitioned to another similar discipline that would be in tune with your art skills. For example, I find that there is a certain connection between what I do when I paint and practicing Tai Chi. They both require a lot of letting go, as well as being able to concentrate in a relaxed way. At least that's what I have found. Well, the thing is that uh, watercolor has kind of taken that space that uh, karate or my athletic career had before. Uh, I get uh, Today I get the same enjoyment out of painting as I did doing sports before. And uh, I didn't realize it in the beginning, but after a while I started realizing that there, that there is a lot of similarities uh, between the two. And uh, just like Mark explained here, uh, I need to be concentrated in both. But also uh, the big thing about doing sports is having goals and trying to achieve something and trying to develop. And um, that is something that uh, definitely is a big important piece of uh, being an artist. Exploring, trying to find new ways, trying to take your art to the next level. Another thing that's similar between uh, sports and uh, painting watercolors is that you have to do problem solving and you have to do it under time pressure. And that can give you a little bit of a kick, I think, especially if you succeed. So that's also something that uh, I don't have to miss anymore because when I start uh, competing, that was something that I was missing, the kicks and the, uh, the excitement uh, of problem solving and, uh, and so on, competing. Uh, and I kind of get the same feeling from uh, painting. Okay, the next question is from the Celinda and she writes, how did you start your full-time artist career? Where did you find your first clients? Well, I kind of feel like I, already answered uh, how I started. It was a gradual process uh, and uh, I started off by painting or selling my paintings online. I posted it on Facebook initially and uh, people wrote me messages and asked me, oh, I really like that. Uh, how much does it cost? And uh, they bought uh, a lot of my paintings and that's really how it started through Facebook. Uh, and later on, I started off my Instagram account and uh, that has done the same thing for me as well. And then after that, I started my homepage and uh, I've been selling art through there as well. So it's, it's, it's a process. Uh, you have to start somewhere and you have to start, you have to sell your first paintings and then you have to sell your second painting and then your third and then eventually you'll uh, get more comfortable and get the hang of it and you'll probably find more clients and uh, the internet is a great place for doing all of that. And the next question is from Paula. She writes, have you ever painted with other techniques such as acrylics or oils? If so, why watercolor? Well, uh, I started off by, uh, since I was very young, I liked sketching a lot. So that, that is my base. You could say um, I've been doing a lot of sketching many hours of sketching in my lifetime uh, and after that uh, I started with watercolor and that was more or less a happy accident because my mother-in-law signed me up for a watercolor course back in 2007 and uh, the rest is history so it was a more of a, a happy accident I would guess uh, but uh, having said that uh, I actually purchased some oil paints and I started to experiment a little bit on the side just for the fun of it and I'm still trying to explore uh, the medium and trying to learn it. But uh, primarily it's watercolors uh, and uh, uh, that's what I, at this point anyways, I get the most enjoyment out of painting watercolors. The next question is from Cindy and she wants to know how I sell my art. And the thing is that uh, today I really don't sell my art uh, myself. Uh, because galleries do that for me and uh, I find that very comfortable because I'm an artist, I'm a painter and I'm not a seller. So uh, letting people that actually do that for a living, let them do that, uh, it's really comfortable and that's how I prefer it. So uh, the answer to your question, Cindy, is uh, galleries sell my art, artworks today. And the next question is from Jon and he asks, why watercolor? And what training have you had? Uh, I, I kind of feel like I already answered why I started painting watercolors since I started off with that course back in 2007. And uh, that is really the only workshop that I attended. It was a one day course for me. 
And uh, since then I learned a lot from books and also looking on YouTube and so on like that. And probably a lot of you guys have the same story. Um, but um, there's been a lot of trial and error for me, learning from my own mistakes. And uh, I feel like uh, that is a slow way to take, but it's still a, a great way to learn too. Because uh, during progress, it's important to do have a lot of failures. Because every failure, will uh, it's a good learning experience as well. So um, that's the training I've had. One course back in 2007, and then after that, studying watercolor books. Uh, and uh, a few YouTube videos, I guess. And the last question is from Tormund, and he is writing, uh, was there a particular time, goal or break point that convinced you to pursue a professional career in art? And uh, actually there was a particular uh, breaking point where I started actually thinking about maybe taking the step and doing this full time. And uh, that was uh, uh, during the pandemic, because I got really sick and I was in the hospital and I didn't know if I was going to survive or not. Uh, I was uh, hospitalized for eight days and I was sick for a long time after that as well. And that kind of made me thinking uh, what I wanted to do with my life. And I think that's where I kind of the process started when I started to think about maybe I should rethink what I'm doing with my life and what I put my time into. And uh, that's kind of where it's, the process started and uh, I was going back and forth for so long before I actually made the decision to, um, to try this. So being that sick gave me a completely different perspective on life and uh, what I wanted to do. Okay guys, uh, that's a little bit about my uh, life as an artist so far and I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, who knows, maybe I'll do more Q&As like this in the future. And uh, if you have any suggestions on more Q&As or topics, then just write a comment down below. Okay, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.